Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Matt Garvin. We are here to talk about making comics today. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about getting our file ready finally to be sent off to the printer so we can get back a nice glossy version of that comic where we can sell it at comic cons or online or to comic shops or to wherever you're going to sell your books. Now, if you have been following these videos for the last couple of weeks, it may have seemed like a bit of a long winded process of, you know, getting the pages set up in the correct way, that kind of thing. But I promise you, if you have been following these steps, not only is it going to save you time, later on it's also potentially going to save you money because there is nothing worse than getting a comic back from the printer because you've not done something and you know that comic is now unsellable because you've just wasted 200 pounds and there's a glaring printing issue so if you haven't seen any of those videos after you've watched this it may be worth going back and just checking a few of those out just to make sure that your pages are set up in the correct way before we get to this point also i'm going to give you my biggest tip the most important thing that you need to do before you send this comic off to the printers at the end of this video so make sure you watch to the very very end but if you have been following all my advice thus far hopefully when you get your pages back from the letter you'll get something like this on the screen now what i tend to do is i tend to save three different versions of my comic now the reason why i say free is i have a cmyk version which goes off to the printer and we've covered this on this channel before you know cmyk stands for cyan magenta yellow and k stands for black and those are the toners that are in the basically the printer's printer i also save a version that is an rgb version and the reason why i save an rgb version is i sell digital copies of my comics through my website but i also upload my comics to places like comiXology and comic house that kind of thing so we need to have an rgb version which is actually going to be look better on things like computer screens and tablets that kind of thing but what I also do is for at least the first five or six pages of my comic, I save an RGB JPEG version. And the reason why I save these pages as that is if you're gonna be sending your comic off to review sites, that kind of thing, the reviewers are probably gonna ask you for pages that they can put on their website, that kind of thing to show off the, you know, the lovely art and stuff like that. So you need to have something that you can send them. Or if you're like me, you may want to tease your comic on things like Twitter and Instagram or LinkedIn or wherever you want to tease your comics. So you kind of need a JPEG version of those books. So what I tend to do is I save it as a CMYK, then I convert it to RGB, and then that RGB version I also save as a JPEG. So what you want to do is when you get your pages back from your letter, you need to make sure that firstly they are in CMYK. And to do this, you know, I've got this page opened up in Photoshop. Now this is a page from one of the comics that I do called Untitled Generic Space Comedy with awesome art by John McFarlane and beautiful colors by Alison Hugh. Now I've lettered this myself, so I've not had to send this off to a letter and be sent back. So I know this is set up in the correct way, but when you get your files back, this is what you need to do for every single page that you get back you need to make sure that they're in the right format because there's nothing worse than sending a file off to the printer and then sending it back and going it's in the wrong format or if you've sent it off to you know comiXology and you've sent them a cmyk file instead of an rgb file and then you know rejecting your comic so all you need to do is every page that you've got if you go up to image up here on the top and if you just hover over mode and you get this little drop down box and as you can see the cmyk version is actually ticked on that box there now if it's the RGB version, obviously that tick will be there. So if it is on RGB, just tick the CMYK. And what that's going to do is that's going to convert it. Now, so that I know that this page is flat from the letterer. The letters are, you know, are all done. The page is CMYK. So this is going to be my print file. Now I need to save it. Now, this is where our file management comes into play a lot. Now, what I do is, again, I have three different folders. I've got my CMYK my RGB and my JPEG file. And what I do is I do this in stages. So if you follow along, again, this is gonna save you time later on. So literally it's just file and then save as, and then obviously this is in my CMYK file already, but I'm just gonna resave it for, for you guys. And it's gonna save, do I want to replace it? Yes. And then it's gonna come up with this box and it's gonna ask me if I want to compress the file and you know, to make it a little, a little bit smaller, but I don't tend to do that. What I tend to do is I keep it in its original size and then I send it off to the printer. Then if they need to reduce it, you know, for it to go into InDesign or something like that, then it's on them. I know that I've sent them over the best possible quality. Now, make sure nothing's checked here. The, you know, the, it's standard, it's for high quality print. Then I go to compression, you know, there's no compression. I've not done any down sampling or no compression. Then I go to save PDF and that's actually saving. So then what I do is I go to image, I go to mode, and then I go 
RGB. So what that's going to do is that's created a RGB version of that comic page for me. So then same situation, go save as, obviously save as, don't go to save because you don't want to overwrite the one you've just done. And then I come out of the CMYK folder and I go into the RGB folder. Again, I already have a version in here, but I'm just going to save it again for the sake of this. Yes, I'm going to replace it. That menu is going to pop up about compression. I know it's all fine. So that's saved. And then what I do one last time, I go to save as, and then in the drop down box, I go to JPEG. And then I come out of that folder and I go into my JPEG folder. And then I save that as a JPEG. And I always save it as, you know, maximum quality because obviously I want to show off the art and the colors as, as lovely that they are and click OK. So now I have my three versions of my comic. So I've got my CMYK, my RGB and my JPEG. Now, one of the other things that I do, which may seem quite bizarre, is I renumber the pages of my comic. So for an example, the page you can see on the screen at the moment is actually page one of this comic. But I have saved it as page three. So because what I do is I save the cover as zero one. I save obviously the inside cover as 02 and then the first page of the comic as 03 and 04, 05 and so forth. Then the inside back cover which is 27 and then the actual back cover of the comic which is 28. Now the reason why I do this is because when you send your files to the printer you may need to send it as a, an entire you know one PDF which I'm going to show you how to make in a second but I use an online printer and I can send it as a whole PDF or I can upload the pages individually. Now I always upload the pages individually for two reasons. One because I'm using an automatic system sometimes you know it may not recognize that you know the cover is the first page and you know the where the comic page starts and where the comic pages end so if i've numbered them 01 02 03 04 it's going to put them in the right order so if you do do that make sure you don't do one two three four it's always zero one zero two zero three zero four because you never know sometimes these systems you know will put number one next to number 11 because of you know they match up so that's how i do it and the reason why i upload my pages individually is when i use an online system if there is a problem you know the, the printer may notice there's a problem with the bleeds or something like that they will say matt there is a problem with you know page four and rather than having to take that entire pdf back and make the changes and build the pdf again i just need to change that one page and then re-upload that one page and it makes it a lot simpler so how I do it, again, I just, the cover is page one, zero one, inside cover, zero two, the first page of my comic is zero three, and so forth. So, okay, so once you've gone through all your pages and saved them correctly as PDFs, as either CMYK, RGB, and the occasional JPEGs, that kind of thing, what we need to do is we need to combine these into one separate document that you could send off, because if you want to send it off to the printer as one big document, if you're not using an online printer, or, you know, you might need to, you know, upload this to places like Comixology and that kind of thing, which, again, I'm going to show you in a couple of weeks' time, so, you know, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss that video. Now, there are some free ways to create a PDF and there are some paid versions. Now, I use a site called Small PDF. Now, I used to use the paid version and the good thing about the paid version is it lets you download the software that will allow you to create that one PDF actually on your PC. Downside of that is if you're not using it every couple of times a month, it's not really worth the money. There is a free version that you can use. The only problem with the free version is you need to upload your files to their cloud. They convert them and you need to re-download them. Now this can take a little while, but it's free. So I'm not going to argue the time because I can leave my PC on and let it do what it needs to do. Now the website is smallpdf.com. I'll put a link in the description if you want to use it. Now once you go onto the website, you'll see you know th this page. There are some other free sites there, there like combined PDF and stuff like that. I, I have used small PDF for a couple of years now and I know it's a good service. Now there's two tools that we can use here that are very, very handy. One is the merge PDF which we're going to use right now. But also, once we've merged that PDF, another one we can use is Compress PDF. Now, this is great if you're going to be sending this to buddies or you're going to be sending it to reviewers, that kind of thing, because what it does is obviously going to compress the file, make it a little bit more palatable for people to download, or if you want to put in a Dropbox folder, that kind of thing, rather than having to, you know, perhaps save a, download a file that's, you know, half a gig, something like that. So, the Merge PDF and the Compress PDF are two great tools that we can use there, but I'm going to show you how to use the Merge one first. It's easy as pie. Basically, just click on Merge PDF and this menu opens. Then all you do is you grab your file. So I've got my, my lettered files here. So I've got my RGB file. So I'm going to go from pages 1 to 28. I've already got a version here anyway. Um, but then I'm just going to drag it over. And all that's going to do 
is that's going to upload those files and it's going to merge them and then I need to re-download it. Now the problem is it's going to take a bit of a while so I'll be back in a second. Okay, so we're back and that took about four minutes for that file to be uploaded and then you're met with a screen and it's offering you, offering you the merge files and the merge profiles. Again, you don't really need the pro version because that's what you have to pay for. So, you know, just click merge and then choose option and then you met with this screen is giving you one last chance to check out your pdf before you know it actually gets merged together so if for instance if you have mislabeled any of the, the pages and you do need to move them just click and drag and you can swap them around wherever you want but then apart from that again all you need to do just make sure everything's done correctly and then click merge pdf and away we go and again this is going to take a few minutes so rather just sit here in silence i'm going to cut to it being done and that's it guys that's how easy it is to do then from here all you need to do is click the download button you can download it directly to your device or you can save it to your dropbox and google drive but that's it that is your file condensed compressed a single pdf created of your document for your comic to be sent off to the printer now this is the most important thing that i wanted to say to you guys and it's what i mentioned at the beginning of the video now before this file goes anywhere near a printer and i'm going to show you how i print next week what you need to do is you need to have someone proofread this book for you i cannot emphasize how important that is and you might say to me matt you know what i've had someone you know proofread my script and then i read the letters when they came back i get that but sometimes when you're working on a project especially myself when i'm lettering something sometimes i make a silly mistake that's you know that's going to cost me so what i tend to do is i have I have a few buddies that I let read my comics before they go to the printer, but I have three main proofreaders. And the reason I've got three, I've got my friends Jenny and Paul. Hi guys, appreciate your support. But I also have Mrs. Garvey as well that is my final proofreader. So what tends to happen is, is Jenny and Paul will both proofread it for me. And the reason why there's two of them is because sometimes Paul will find stuff that Jenny misses and sometimes Jenny will find stuff that Paul misses because we all miss, miss stuff. And then based on what they find, then it goes to Mrs. Garvey who will give it that once more read through. And between the three of them, we tend to catch all the mistakes. So, so what I'm saying is what you need to do is you need to have at least two people, you know, have a little read of that comic just to make 100% sure that that comic is absolutely spot on and it looks professional because you don't want to look amateurish because you've missed a full stop or you've missed a comma or you've put an A and an E around the wrong way. Something silly like that because sometimes when we're reading really, really fast, our mind kind of makes up the mistakes and makes them look perfect. So that's what I'm going to say. That is the most important piece of advice. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like, share and a subscribe. I will see you in the next video. And remember, if I can make comics, anyone can. Take care.